Hey, this is Brian with Radical Prep. Let's finish up this test. We're at number 31. Why it can husk at least 12 dozen ears of corn per hour, and at most 18 dozen ears of corn per hour. Based on this information, what is a possible amount of time in hours that it could take Wyatt to husk 72 dozen ears of corn? Well, there's a real simple way I'm going to do this problem, and I'm just going to set up a proportion. So we know he does 12 dozen per one hour, and if he does 72 dozen, how long is that going to take? Two fractions set equal, just cross multiply. So I get ooh, 72 equals 12x, divide by 12, divide by 12. That's, uh, what, 6? X equals 6 hours. So you could put 6. 6 is a totally legit answer for how long it could take him to do 72 years of corn. And that's it. Move on. Okay. Number 32. The posted weight limit for a covered wooden bridge in Pennsylvania is 6,000 pounds. A delivery truck that is carrying X identical boxes, each weighing 14 pounds, uh, will pass over the bridge. So I'm just going to write that down real quick. So each, um, each box, each box, 14 pounds. Um, if the combined weight of the empty delivery truck and its driver is 4,500 pounds, what is the maximum possible value for X that will keep the combined weight of the truck, driver, and boxes below the bridge's posted weight limit? So we need the total limit uh, to be what? What did it say in the problem? 6,000, so less than 6,000 pounds. So we have to minus out the delivery truck is carrying blah, blah, blah. The weight of the delivery truck and the driver is 4,500. So we're going to minus from 6,000, 4,500. So we know that the boxes have to weigh at least 1,500 uh, pounds, or at most, excuse me, at most 1,500. So what is the maximum possible value for X? So honestly, we're really just trying to figure out 1,500 divided by 14, because they're 14 pounds each. So that's going to tell you how many boxes you can fit in there. So 1,500 divided by 14, you get 107. 107.1429, 1429. So you're just going to round down because you, you can't go above, you can't have a little bit of a box. So we're going to just pay attention to that so we know that there can only be 107 boxes. And 107 would be what you would put in on test day. This is the write in section. So let's just check that just to make sure. 107 times 14 is 1498. So 1500 plus 1498 gets you really, really close to, um, or excuse me, um, 107 times 14 gets you really close to 1500, right? We're at 1498 pounds. So 107, that's your answer. That's what you're going to grid in. Okay. Number 33. Let's see here. So this one says the number of portable media players sold worldwide each year from 2006 to 2011. And it's the number sold in millions when I look at the side of the graph over here. So what is our question? According to the line graph above, the number of portable media players sold in 2008, which is 100 million, is what fraction of the number sold in 2011? So when they ask you that, it's this amount divided by this amount. So we got 100, I'm just going to do it in as hundreds, it doesn't really matter. 100 divided by 160. This is, seems like a really easy problem, hopefully I'm not missing something. So 10 over 16, right? So you can grid in 10 over 16, you could probably even write 5 over 8. That's probably the best way you could put this, 5 eighths, and you're done. That's really, that's really pretty much it. All right, all right, so it looks like my time's up. Um, so I tried to do this, let me just turn this off. I tried to do this while keeping time for the SAT and keep in mind I was explaining things. So I would have liked to finish this for you guys in time. If not, it's all right. I'm showing you how to keep a good pace. It's pretty tough to do while you're explaining things. So let's just keep moving on and I'll explain the rest to you. So number 34. So we got pretty close. Uh, a local television station sells time slots for programs in 30 minute intervals. If the station operates 24 hours per day, every day of the week, what is the total number number of 30-minute time slots the station can sell for Tuesday and Wednesday? Okay, so let me. I gotta reread this. Sometimes it, they give you a lot of information. 
a local television station sells time slots so each time slot time slot is every 30 minutes and so that, that's a day there's 24 hours in a day so that means there's going to be 48 slots per day okay um, the station operates 24 hours per day every day of the week what is the total number number can't say that word now a 30 minute time slots the station can sell for Tuesday and Wednesday well if it's 48 a day it's just going to be 48 on the uh, Tuesday and then it's going to be another 48 on the Wednesday so it's 48 plus 48 96 you're done all right number 35 says a dairy farmer uses a storage silo that is in the shape of a right circular cylinder above if the volume of the silo is 72 pi cubic yards what is the diameter of the base of the cylinder in yards well all you gotta know is is that well, first thing I know is what's the area of a circle? Area of a circle is pi r squared, right? So if you have a circle, what is a cylinder? It's just taking that area and extending it with height, okay? So the area of a cylinder, and I'll try and draw my best cylinder here, that's all right, is pi r squared h. So how do we use that to our advantage here? Well, the volume of the silo is 72, or I should really say the, the volume here. I said area, it should be volume. Um, anyway, you get the idea though. So 70, the volume is 72 pi, and what do we know? Pi, we don't know the radius, but we do know h because h is eight. So we're just gonna treat this you know, like a regular algebra problem, divide by eight, divide by 8 and actually I'll divide by pi also to get rid of that so if the pi's are gone uh, that should be 9 is r squared and this should be really easy for you because the radius now what's the square root of 9 just 3 that's it so really it's just testing your ability to plug into this formula and that's it not not to uh, no, no tricks in that one alright number 36 for which value of x is the function h above undefined? Well, what does it mean for a function to be undefined? I hope you guys say at home that you want this denominator to equal zero. That's how we know when it's undefined, right? So we're gonna actually undefined. We're gonna set this up and we're just gonna set it equal to zero. So x minus five squared plus, I'm gonna distribute this, that's four x minus 20, distrib distributed the four, plus four equals zero. So now, this I'll, I'll, I'll write it out once, what the heck. X minus five, X minus five, plus four X minus 16 equals zero. This is gonna be X squared uh, minus 10 X plus 25 plus four X minus 16 equals zero. Um, let's combine like terms. X squared minus six X um, 25 and negative 16 is 9. That should be at plus 9 equals 0. And now we have what looks like x minus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0. I just recognize that this right here is x minus 3 times x minus 3. So that means that what number will make this undefined? Your answer should be 3, right? I guess you could test it and plug it back in if you wanted to, but just you can do it here. Three squared is nine, and uh, ne negative six times three is negative eighteen. So you're going to have nine minus eighteen plus nine, and that's definitely equaling zero. So that's your little test right there. All right, that's it. Move on to number thirty-seven. Let's see here. Uh, Jessica opened a bank account that earns two percent interest compounded annually. Her initial deposit was $100, and she used the expression 100x to the t to find the value in the account after t years. What is the value of x in the expression? Well, if you guys saw any of my other videos, I told you that you put your starting value on the outside, which they did, and this in here is going to be 1 plus the interest rate. Now, the only thing is, um, this is and raised the amount of time. So it's going to be 100 how do we how do we convert 
two percent well we can't just put a two in there two percent is we move this over two places one two point zero two so that's going in here one plus point zero two to the t and i know i wrote this three times and that's a lot but i just want to show you where it all came from your answer is going to be 1.02 that's what's going in there okay one plus two percent that's it number 38 uh, Jessica's friend Tyshawn found an account that earns 2.5% interest compounded annually. Tyshawn made an initial deposit of $100 into this account at the same time Jessica made a deposit of $100 into her account. So they're probably going to ask us to compare the two. After 10 years, how much more money will he have, or how much more money will Tyshawn's initial deposit have earned than Jessica's initial deposit? Round your answer to the nearest cent. Well, we basically just need two equations, right? Um, and we got a round to the nearest cent. So I'll do Tashawn's is over here and Jessica's is over here. And you'll just have to excuse me, I'm going to move up here. What was her thing? 100, what did we say? It was 100, 1.02, right? So um, let me go back here. They both got 100 bucks. He's got 100. She's got 100. She is at 1.02 and for 10 years and he's at 2.5 percent so that's actually going to be 1.025 right if we convert 2.5 percent again we do that whole little thing move it over two places 0.025 right so um and that's to the 10. so let's just do the work here i'll use the calculator and the calculator says 1.025 raised to the 10, okay, times 100. That's 128.00, 128 128.0085. And what's hers? Um, 1.02 to the 10 times 100. So she's making 121, 121 point eight nine nine four, eight nine nine four, and I'll just subtract them, right? This minus this one to give us the uh, how much more money. So let me just put in the calculator again: one twenty eight point zero zero eight five minus one twenty one point eight nine nine four. And we get 6.1091. 6.1091. We got a round though, and that 0.9 or that 9 right there puts us at a grand total of 6.11. Final answer. All right, so I really hope this helped you, uh, you guys out with the SAT and all, all the practice you're doing. It's going to pay off. Keep practicing. Watch some more of my videos. Share with some people. I really appreciate it if you share, like the videos. Good luck to you. Keep studying.